there's a, a few that I can think of. Um, one is being like a technology to feed the world, to feed the masses. That's all we hear about and all we're going to start hearing about more and more is how we're not going to be able to feed the world in a few decades. And so we need to continue investing in technology that will enhance our capabilities and enhance yield in crops so that we're able to feed more people. And I think Alicia hit the nail on the head because a lot of times people will want to feed everyone. They know that there's a hunger problem, but then at the same time, they'll be saying, well, why are we having large scale farms? Why are we using biotechnology to genetically modify mm -hmm. things? Why are we growing our farms in larger scales? And the reason is that we need to feed a larger population. And people need to realize that through biotechnology and all these sciences that we're developing now, that we can feed and clothe the world if we continue to advance in the direction that we're going in. It is a possibility, but we have to have support and we need for everyone to understand and back us up while we're doing this. Uh, so that that is one of the greatest problems that we face and also the stereotypes. Um, lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, the yeah. stereotypes. Um, I remember Alicia and I and Matt's probably went up a few times to Washington DC and they wanted to know why, what the biggest problems was in agriculture and we said well the lack of knowledge and they wanted to know well what don't they understand and it was basically the science behind agriculture that we have now and allowing everyone to understand that so just being able to accurately inform people about where agriculture is today all agriculturalists need to be um, ready and capable to do that so. and uh, Daniel mentioned support uh, one of the biggest things is because of lack of knowledge, we don't have the support we need. Um, with very little active involvement, even through FFA and um, in agriculture in general, uh, we need more support. Uh, we need the public not to get wrapped up in the things of, hey, well, let's not do genetic modified crops because we don't know the long-term effects. Um, we, or that's a positive, uh, we need to focus on those things, but we also need to think about well, what about the world hundred years from now or ten years from now where we're we going to be at um, and agriculture is the foundation of society um, as we said before uh, many people used to have family farms and that's how they live and now that's disappearing so we need to generate support and awareness and people need to gain more knowledge about what is going on in agriculture so maybe we can have that support everyone and every organization wants support and awareness but I think you agriculture we're feeding you so why <laughs> wouldn't you jump on our bandwagon and say yeah let's support our farmers let's support all agriculturalists those brokers anyone that is you know, directly or indirectly affected with agriculture which is everyone and I mean there's if you watch the news there's a famine in Africa right now that's hitting and uh, you, we've already mentioned world hunger but if you watch the news you're going to realize the need for agriculture in today's society and that is what people need to realize when they watch the news is that we do need agriculture to help the people that are struggling because they don't have strong agriculture programs how do you country. see your responsibility for the next generation of educating about agriculture simple as that um, we're going to take it upon ourselves to make sure that our students get the most opportunities, that they get the most information, and that we put as much effort and work into being some of the best agriculture teachers in our state. We're gonna be some of the top agriculture educators in our state because I know personally that we care so much about people and we care so much about agriculture. So we're gonna make sure that our students who come through our classroom doors every day have the best and most opportunities that we can personally give them. And all of us were blessed enough to have agriculture teachers that basically devoted their lives to teaching their students. And uh, no matter how long they had been there, they gave it their, their all and they took us all over the state, all over the country, so that we could have the opportunities that they had that made them want to become agriculture teachers and future agriculture leaders. So uh, I feel that as future agriculture teachers or as future ag business leaders, whatever, we end up doing, we will always be there to help youth and let them realize, uh, let them see all the opportunities that are available to them through agricultural education. It's, 
It's really about developing people. It really and, is. and that's what we want to do. Do I expect every student to come through my classroom to have a cow or a pet fainting goat? No. <laughs> no, no, I don't. But I know that when they leave, they'll at least be more aware of agriculture, more aware of our society and the world in general. And I wish every one of them the best of luck, whether they choose an agricultural field or not. Mm -hmm. I just know that they'll at least be more appreciative of agriculture. I think you both took the words out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> everyone had, like, our ag teachers had an influence on us, our families had an influence on us, uh, even the world of agriculture has an influence on us, and the same reason we're going to have an influence on future generations. So it's like a continuous cycle of people getting involved with agriculture or going in other fields. We're giving back. <laughs>